It's hide your birthday. Are birds even real? This question. I don't. I I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Yertle the Turtle. Yertle the Turtle. And this here is Frank. <laughs> Looking cool. Looking like a hipster. Yeah. Uh, like the date glasses, dig the hat, the scarf, the jacket. He was wearing that jacket yesterday, but as you guys know, yesterday was New Beer's Day. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um he was out all night yeah. i'm surprised we even got him back into the studio yeah. for today's podcast mm-hmm. but that's why his glasses are on he's, he's still <laughs> a little bit blurry visioned <laughs> yeah. but how are you guys doing it's friday yes yes um a friday in lent hope you guys aren't eating meat and if you are that's okay just say uh, sorry or if you don't want to meet eat meat any day of the week you can join me Eating meat never. I eat, I, I told eat, you. I, I, I said, eat meat never. I said, I, I think for this Lent, you should have forced yourself to be a carnivore every Friday of Lent. It gives me inflammation. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what's worse than inflammation? Crucifixion. <laughs> not not worse than a splinter. Yeah. Earlier podcast reference. Yeah, check out yesterday's podcast. We talked about Isaiah. It was a walk through Thursday. Yeah. And that's actually not the podcast where we talked about splinters and wood. That was Wednesday's podcast. Wood Wednesday. On wood. <sighs> yeah. Would you be so kind to go watch that? Yes. But as we said, we as we've been saying for the past couple podcasts, Instagram, we still have this um bracket going every day. It's April Madness. Yeah. It's April Madness every day at our at our Instagram at Kirk and Crow. We're pitting Bible verses against each other. Right. We're we're, we're turning it into an archaic bar. Barrack Coliseum <laughs> style fight, and um, it's a uh, it's a good one today. I think you're you're winning by country mile. Uh, that's okay. I am not. Oh, I not. am Titus. Yeah, Titus is losing. Oh, is it terribly? Last time I went. against Jeremiah. Good. Um, uh, yeah, it's fun for you because you get to vote. It's fun for us because we get to be tormented over the fact that we picked the wrong. Um, verse. verse to <laughs> represent such a great book. All yeah. all the books are great in the Bible, so it's it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. But hey, go vote for uh, Jeremiah. Forget about Titus. Just Jeremiah for now. doesn't need any more votes right now. It's Titus. I voted for Titus. And I was thinking we could see which one the the Old Testament or the New Testament, but it's hard for the New Testament, right? Because there's more books. There's way more books. Yeah, against it, but still, it's like two thirds. What if it does? Anyhow, guys. 18 hats 18 hats it's, it's as we said it's lent every podcast of lent you are adding a hat another hat and you are you are getting getting to it i'm getting up there because sunday's palm sunday yeah and then holy week and yeah. then we're done so on good friday will be my 21st hat it'll be my 21st birthday and then and then easter sunday i just get to put on my easter bonnet oh get to take all these off this should like that whatever you have on this friday that will be your easter bonnet oh my gosh you'll wear it to church people would love to sit behind me i'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> well yeah wow even looking at it there it's yeah. fun, your profile is i think it makes it funnier <laughs> oh it's man. heavy it's it kind of looks like a whole like a dinosaur on top of your head it's my turtle oh you're at all the turtle you're at all the turtle okay well, guys, it's April 8th. Speaking of, of animals. Speaking of animals, it's April 8th. Are you getting your taxes done? Because that there's IRS, a bunch of hyenas. I'll tell you that much. No, April 8th is National Zoo Lovers Day. Zoo Lovers. And um, National Zoo Lovers Day. So I looked up zoos um, and to say, I bet they're giving, you know, we always say that. What are you giving out? Yeah. On burrito Day. Are we getting yeah. free burritos? Oh, uh, yeah. It's free enchilada day. Just saying. Is it? No, empanada. Sorry. Free or just empanada day? Oh, no. It's national empanada right, day. Right. Because they should be, things should be free. So I looked up zoos to be like, what are you offering today on, on yeah. National Zoo Lovers Day? Nothing. Well, no. None I, of the zoos were offering I told, anything. I, I think I, I talked about this when it was National Cheesesteak Day. I think, why would they offer deals when that's the day people are like, oh, it's National Cheesesteak Day? Let me go buy cheesesteaks. Deal, like, if it's National Bowling Day, you're not going to get any bowling deals. Any given Tuesday. No, I, I disagree. Really? I think it's like, I think, who do you think made the holidays? I think it's people trying to get you in. Well, did you know how many zoos are in Pennsylvania? In Pennsylvania? Yeah. Can I guess? Sure. You have a surprise <laughs> look on your face. Yeah. So I think it's going to be more than I think. Uh, yeah, it was more than I thought. Now, what constitutes a zoo? Uh, 
Do you definitionally know what a zoo is? Well, one, two, oops, I'm counting. Um, yeah, there are more than I counted because okay. there's there's petting zoos. I didn't count that. We're counting with real zoos. There's reptilian in in, okay. in, in um what are these enclosures. enclosures? Yeah, stuff like this. I didn't count that. I okay. counted real zoos. zoos. Yeah. Okay, well, so then I, then the number, number's lower than I would think. So I'm going to just bounce around here. Philadelphia has to have one. Pittsburgh has to have one. Yes. Let's give Harrisburg, Allentown, and York, Pennsylvania one. Let's say five. Five? I'm very surprised. I First of all, sorry. Pen, sorry. Technically, Pits- I thought there would be two. I thought there was one. <laughs> I, I, sorry, Pittsburgh. But I always heard of the Philadelphia Zoo. I think it's pretty old. And I, I didn't even think Pittsburgh had a zoo. Okay, but Pittsburgh does have a zoo, a big, and that's the other thing you said. What constitutes a zoo? There is some kind of like zoo organization, yeah. national that like, if if we just decided to like have a camel and and a, and a goat and a raccoon in our backyard, we could call it a zoo. But we probably don't belong to this. The zoo club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the zoo club. So um, these ones do. Philadelphia Zoo, Pittsburgh Zoo, the Elmwood Zoo, which Elmwood. You, which you went to in Norristown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the Erie Zoo. I don't even know where these cities are. Erie is is northwest Pennsylvania, very northwest. Um, the Lehigh Valley Zoo, which is Schnecksville. Zoo America in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I didn't. Ah, uh, Hershey. I didn't even know that. Neither did I. Okay. Um, that's the main zoos in Pennsylvania. But yeah, it's way more than I thought. So how many is that? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess five. Six. Um. But guess what? February 25th, the Lehigh Valley Zoo put out a press release that said... We're done. Closing the shop. No, no. It said this bird flu is back. Oh, not the bird flu. Bird flu is back. We just got done COVID. I know. And and years ago when bird flu was here, they told people to watch out, right? Yeah. Remember, we talked about that on the podcast. Carnival didn't use feathers and they said, don't put out bird seed. For this avian flu... Um, time they're saying it hasn't been reported in people but it is killing birds so um, Lehigh Valley Zoo put out a statement it said we we're, we're hiding all our birds away <laughs> I'm serious because don't look at them <laughs> yeah wild birds can give it to them oh zookeepers can give it to them um, so they're hiding the birds why are birds so fragile I don't know but um, they Lehigh Valley Zoo mentioned that in collaboration with um, other, zoo, other zoos on the North American Atlantic Flyway. Flyway. As the bird flies. <laughs> Lehigh Valley Zoo, Adventure Aquarium, Philadelphia Zoo, Elmwood Park Zoo, Brandywine, Erie, Maryland, and Pittsburgh zoos are all hiding their birds. It's hide your birthday. Are birds even real? Is a question. I don't I I think so. Yeah. So um there's no there's no um deals right now. Smithsonian Zoo in um DC. So Philadelphia Zoo is pricey. And you even have to pay for Elmwood Zoo. But Smithsonian Zoo in DC is free. Oh, really? Yeah. Good for them. It's it's free. You you do have to sign up so we wouldn't have a million people, you know? Yeah. You have to get a ticket. Um also I just wanted to say that Disney's Animal Kingdom draws over ten million visitors every year. Every day? Year. Wow. Every year. But um <laughs> Wait, I had something to say. You messed me up by making that silly mess. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Okay, one more thing. El- local, Elmwood Park Zoo, which we keep talking about, which is in Norristown. Um, how was it? You went. I didn't. It was good. Uh, ah, the zoo's a zoo. They're the first zoo in America starting last year. They let you bring your dog. No. Yes. Oh, that's probably so great for dogs. I think it's terrifying for the animals. Yeah, those poor animals. And also, like, the jealousy factor. Yeah. Can you imagine this, like, animal who's, like, the genetic makeup is not far from a dog. Yeah. Being like, really? You can just walk around? Elmwood Park Zoo lets you bring your dog. Doesn't have to be a service dog. What if the dog starts barking? I don't know what happens. At the I rhinos. It's called the, the Norristown Dog Days. I wonder if they have like uh, dog paths. Like, you know, some like the monkey closures. Uh, like, is it like, you know, there's a, uh, this is as far as you can go. Yeah. If it's like a gated enclosure. Do you think there's maybe like a further away for the maybe. dogs? There's rules. Like you have to uh, talk about Smithsonian. Have you have to sign up for to bring your dog? You have to be you're over eighteen. You have to like sign things. You'll stay with the owner. You have to. Make the dog sh- has to sign these things. <laughs> yeah, you have to. I'll stay on, with the <laughs> owner. You have to go to the vet every year. Um, they do have rules. Let's see how it works because it's pretty new. Oh, we should bring dogs while we have the chance. 
go to Norristown Elmwood Zoo and well, before you go, read the website. Don't bring your bird, but bring your dog. If you take anything away from this podcast, is don't bring your dirt, dirt bird, but bring your dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Well, that's, it's National Zoo Day. Go to the zoo. Go look at the animals. Go to the zoo. Look for... Unless you're... A lot of people are anti-zoo. Just saying. A lot of people are um, anti-zoo. Well, that's rude because the zoo celebrates the education and awareness brought um, about by... What's this word? When you save things from extinction? Yeah. Conservation? Many, many animals um, are going extinct or could have gone extinct except for the science of zoology. It's kind of like Planned Parenthood. Yeah, that's right. It gets a bad rap. All right, guys. Well, today is Dr. Seuss Friday. The best day to talk about Dr. Seuss, who loves animals. Yes. Made up ones, even. That's right. Like a, a quagger bug. Yes. I think that might be in the insect category. But anyway, guys, we have a little thing called Dr. Seuss Friday. And what we do is we read a Dr. Seuss He was book. not a bug, was he? His last name is Bug. I know, but remember, bug. that was the Grinch, wasn't No, that was Horton and the Quagger Bug. Uh, Oh, Horton was the elephant type of situation. Yeah. Okay. Go it's ahead. not elephant type. He's just an elephant. He's just a regular elephant? He might be a little bit like different colored. Might have a little, a little fluff to him. Okay. So on Dr. Seuss Friday, we read a Dr. Seuss book and we try to get some uh, some significance out of it. Some metaphorical. What, what, how, what can we take from this book? Yeah. And use in our own lives. Uh, right. pa- we use it as a parable almost. We do. And it's like, okay, well, I understand that Horton heard a who. Mm-hmm. But what, what what does it mean? Yeah. What can I walk away and say, next time I hear who, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, every, yeah, we have big old brains. And so they're not kids books because yeah. they're written by adults. You know what? That's the thing about kids. Like, oh, they're kids books. Did a kid write it? No. An adult with the first name doctor, even though he wasn't really a doctor. Wrote yeah. It. Um, you could have a, a big fat giant book, novel, or historical uh, reenactment of of a nobody a no uh, some some person who wrote it never wrote anything again dr seuss is an award-winning um completely celebrated um he's a smart author. guy and he's and, and if we learned anything from the past dr seuss fridays is that there is significance and we can learn a lot from children jesus told us that he said be like children we can learn a lot from dr seuss so we finished horton and the quagger bug and more law stories we finished 15 dr seuss books we did Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, so we have a playlist. We finished. Um, our last book was a multitude of books. Mm-hmm. Um, Horton and the Quagger Bug and more lost stories. Okay. And so today we are starting a new multi book. It's a Dr. Seuss multiverse. So today we're reading Yurtle the Turtle and other stories. Well, we're not reading the other stories. Over the next few weeks. Oh, yes. But... um. There, these aren't lost stories. No, just to be clear, they're found. these are just these are found. These stories were never lost. Right. So today we're going to read Yertle the Turtle. I love it. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, popular. Pretty mainstream. It's Usually, not as yeah. It's not as niche as the ones we've after been coming from. Uh, you know, reading. more lost stories. Yeah. Yertle the Turtle. Let's just get into it. Okay. What do you here. do when you when you have to scratch? Like, what do people do? I feel an itch in there. I think you pat. <laughs> that doesn't do anything. I'm serious. It doesn't do anything. I literally knock my hat off. Oh, yeah. You can do the panto. Oh, God. Okay. On the faraway island of Salamansand, Yertle the turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need, and they were all happy, quite happy indeed. They were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough that's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king I'd be, ruler of all I could see. So Yertle the turtle... so. Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand, and Yertle the Turtle King gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. He made each turtle stand on another's one back, and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. Then Yertle climbed up, he sat down on the pile. What a wonderful view, he could see most a mile. All mine, Yertle cried, oh the things I now rule. 
I'm king of a cow, I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and what's more beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. And although that morning he sat there up high, saying over and over, a great, great king am I, until long about noon then he heard a faint sigh, what's that, snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac. Just a part of his throne in this plain little turtle looked up and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I've got pains in my back and my shoulder and my knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty, please? Silence, the king of the turtles barked back. I'm king and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow, I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house and a bush and a cat. But that's all, I, I'll do better than, but that's not that. But that isn't all, I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles, I want about two hundred. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed. And the turtles weighed down in the pond were afraid. They shrumbled, trembled, they shook, but they came, they obeyed. From all over the pond they came swimming by the dozens. Whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins. And all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. On one after another they climbed up the stack. Then Yertle the turtle was perched up so high, he could see forty miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle, I'm king of the trees, I'm king of the birds, and I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies, king of the air. Ah me, what a throne, what a wonderful chair. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Then again from below, in the great heavy stack, came a groan from that plain little turtle named Mac. Your majesty, please, I don't like to complain. But down here below, we are feeling great pain. I know you are on top. I know up on top you are seeing great sights. But down at the bottom, we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving, groaned Mac. You hush up your mouth, howled the mighty King Yertle. You have no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds over land, over sea. There's nothing, no nothing that's higher than me. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise. Up over his head in the darkening skies, what's that, snorted Yertle? Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I, I'll go higher still. I will build my throne higher. I can and I will. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he had taken enough and he had, and that plain little lad got a little bit mad. And that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped, and his burp shook the throne of the king. And Yertle the Turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air, and the birds and the bees, the king of the house, and a cow and a mule, well, that was the end of the Turtle King's rule. For Yertle the king of Salamansand fell off his high throne and fell plunk in a pond. And today the great Yertle, that marvelous he, the king of the mud, that is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free as turtles and maybe all creatures should be. I like it. The end. Yertle the turtle. I never knew Yertle the turtle was a bad guy. <laughs> I know. I've always heard that name and now it's... Well, it should be Bezos the turtle. Oh. <laughs> oh. T. Okay, sis. So you think? I was thinking I was thinking a couple of things um, of comparisons. I mean, that's what's so great about... These stories is you can you can use a lot of comparisons not to right. get politically agendified on this. I was thinking of Vladimir Putin a little bit. You could also think of that. Yep. I was thinking of Vladimir Putin. He said he was in his he, he was the king of the pond. Let's not forget about that. Right. And it was like you mean Yertle. Yertle was yeah. the king of the pond and already. He, and mm -hmm. he said, "I am. I want more than this. Yeah. I, I want to see more." And then who did he need? Like he then stepped on the heads of. His other turtles. You're right. To get that, but on a commercial, is that like organizationally? I can see the Bezos thing where 
these poor Amazon workers. Getting That's what no, I was thinking. Get no pee breaks. When you were oh, reading. There's a whole lot of Mac, Mac the Turtles. Mac. Well, I, you know, I'm going to say that Mac was Irish because Mac's an Irish name. Yeah. My dad was Tommy Mac. Yeah. So he he's the one that had it. A little bit of uprising. Topple over yeah. the yeah. Tower of Babel. Yeah, that's that's what the last thing I was going to say. <laughs> At the very end, it said, let's go to the heavens. And yeah. That was very reminiscent to the story of the Tower of Babel, which would you like to talk about a little bit? Just to explain what it was? Yeah, I mean, I don't you know, know I think story. I've gotten this story wrong a few times. My my Just my, my vague knowledge of it is that... Um, Trying to reach heaven, right? They're yeah, just... they're trying to build a, a tower to get to heaven. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously you can't. And it's what caused different languages because right. the, the, when the tower was destroyed, everyone spoke different languages. Like er, everyone started not understanding each other right? because they were all separated to speak right. different languages. Yeah, it, it, it did actually also remind me of the pyramids, you know, these because he, he kept saying his throne, his throne, his throne. And like yeah. the pyramid was, um, isn't it, isn't it the... It shows the prestige of that particular yeah, it's a, pharaoh. Yeah, it's, it's a funeral. It's, it's a, a funeral. it's 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 a for like a grave site. Right. Um. Where the so yeah the bigger. The so the pyramid. result is this is Pharaoh's pyramid, you know, but yeah. it was built by all the max, all of the slaves, all of the slaves, and all yeah. of the um, all of the people. So go ahead. So yeah, so like I said, I mean, I, I was like you know thinking a little a little Vladimir Putiny. Mm-hmm. But just in general, you can compare it to anything of this idea of where like getting power by using people. Yeah. And um and there's another part of it where it's a false this is in the same way with a, a false prophet, there's a there's a false sense of what power is. True. Because he was getting up and up and look at me. I'm the king of the mules. I was mules. thinking that. I'm the king. Just because he could see it. Just because he could see it. Because when he was the king, he was like, I'm king of all I can see. Right. And then it's like, he gets up. He's like, well, now I'm king. of you. The mules are like, get lost, turtle. That's funny. That's like the original explorers. You know, yeah. if you landed somewhere, you said, oh. This is look, mine. This is mine yeah. now because I can see, I, you know, I'm now within yeah. vision of it. And, um, but, you know, on the on the inverse, good old, good old Mac showed the inverse of it which was finally realizing you're only as powerful as we like yeah. we are the real foundation here like right. it was definitionally a foundation right that they were making and it's like individually they were all scared of like they right. were scared of him down there so like, oh, i'm scared of your old turtle and it's like when there's that collective unit of well that's why that's what unions are all about like we need yeah. we all need to get together you can't just have one mac you have yeah. to have um a lot but in in that story it was just the one yeah and um then obviously he fell and then there was a nice little line that said um they were f- the turtles were all free maybe yeah. that's how all animals should be right oh, and um the zoo <laughs> No, but I only think it was just talking about the animals, like just in the sense of that equality of like, no, there isn't someone on top. Like there, there isn't. Right. Like why, why? It, it was oppression is yeah. what he was yeah. doing. You know, I just made a joke about the zoo, but. Compression, really. <laughs> <laughs> in reality, um, zoos do protect animals. So you might say, oh, you know, the, the giant turtles in the zoo are not free, as yeah. free as the turtles. But, you know, in, um, in other countries, places uh that aren't zoos where animals are free they um they they slaughter turtles yeah for all different sorts of reasons but you know they're they're um they're endangered yeah um so zoos do protect um them now also i I noticed in the story where where my feelings turned harder harsher on yurtle was when it was brought to his attention yes so for it's, oh I have this idea you know and I want to I want to go higher and I want to see further but once it was brought to his attention like I'm hungry yeah. and you're hurting me that's when it was really very egregious yes yeah because I, I think before then it's this there there can be an ignorance to yes. it yes because I mean like there there was just ignorance to his view in in the sense of thinking that hey, oh I, right. I, I I'm the king I right. own everything and it's like once it's brought to your attention it's still that. I don't care. Right. That's when it's, you deserve to topple. Yurtle. Yeah. And also, um, spiritually, because we are the Susical spiritual commentators. Yes, we are. 
um, spiritually. So he physically he could um, bully the the turtles and he could climb higher and higher and higher. And this is my throne and I'm the king. Um, but when he saw that the moon was higher than he was, you know, so you really could you really could be a Bezos or I don't know who's the richest richest human on earth right now. It's not is it Bezos or is it someone else? No, it probably. always changes, yeah. but it's they're all up there together. Um, even Bezos going to outer space, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna go higher and higher and higher. Uh you can never go high enough yeah. because you're going outside of yourself. Well, yeah, and I, th I think that that was the one comparable thing. Like, even it literally said it in there and it was a comparable thing to like the Tower of Babel or whatever you want to compare it to, where he said he saw the moon and at first he's like what is that thing up there? Right. He's like, you know what? We're going. We're we're going to go up to the heavens. Right. Is what it said. And it's that. Yeah. It's, it's that. In it's that unattainable thing. And that's right. like a, sort of. I think what the story of one day we'll have to walk Thursday on of Tower of Babel is. Yeah, I know. But it's the idea of not even worrying about why you're on earth and like, right. why are you the king of of the of the turtles right. and like can you do good? Right. And positions of power is nothing wrong with it. But you completely don't care about where you are. Right. You don't want to help where you are. Right. And that's like a lot of why people, you know, Elon Musk is a little different because it's like, oh, I'm trying to get us to space to yeah. save humanity, right. Right. whatever. But this idea of spending millions of dollars to look over here and not look around you. Right. Um, and it's it's that idea of I don't care. I, I, I'm going. I'm going. And, and heaven's great. And I think us as Christians, we're all looking. Yeah. Or like one day to, uh, at the heavens, but right. the point of being on earth is not to say, let's get closer and closer. Right. It's to let's let's stay where we are yeah. and make our, make this the best lake there is. Make I, this turtle's the happiest. It also be. put me in mind of the, you know, the Christmas story where the king, when he found out that another king was to be born, mm. which could be competition for him, instead of saying, well, you know what? Let, let's see him try because I'm going to be the best king yeah. that could ever be. It's like, it's, no, I'm just going to kill the competition. Yeah. You know, so this Yertle was trying to climb past competition. Yeah. Oh, the, the moon seems pretty powerful. I'm yeah. going to be more powerful. Than, I'm going to be taller than the moon. Right. So to, um, well, to compare yourself at all isn't great. But, Comparison is a thief of all joy, I once heard. But but, but also to, to um, be competitive by trying to kill your competition yeah. is... No, I don't think as valuable as just being the best that you can be. So yeah, so just final takeaways um, on both sides. Obviously, there's there is this this power hungriness that we all have, even on a small scale. Mm -hmm. But you need to be careful of how you're getting where you're getting, and right. are you bringing people up with you? Right. He was he wasn't building foundation for him and the turtles to climb up. Right. He was stepping on their heads physically and and metaphorically. We need to be careful of when we're moving, trying to get to places we want to be. That we're not stepping on heads to do so, and then on the other side, the max we like need to remember of you know when people are in charge and stuff that yeah. there is power in people, in good people, and you should always you know side with what is right. And things may seem like oh this person is big, this person's saying this. It's funny. Uh, I think it's Thidwig, the Thidwig, the big-hearted moose. Big-hearted moose. Similar story. But he was alone being climbed on by everybody, right? Oh. And this is... He was powerful and, and was being used. This is used. one guy climbing on it, you know. Yeah. So. A lot of parallels. Any closing thoughts? No. Thank you, Dr. Seuss. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Seuss, for another banger. But get you get used to Thidwick and more stories because we are going to go back That's Yertle the Turtle. <laughs> get used to Yertle the Turtle and more stories because we're going to go back to it for the next couple of Dr. Seuss Fridays. So that is it for us. Go out to the zoo. Go see some turtles. Yeah. Make sure. And if it's Yertle, give him a hurdle. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Go out, have fun. Have some empanadas. Peace.